All right, so we're back. So I went ahead and I filled in all the different boxes. So now that we, ha we have everything filled in. However, like I said, this is about the halfway point um, because we have some issues here. The value of this box here, the step eight, is the same as the step seven, almost, for the most part. And six and five are the same. And four and three are pretty close to the same as well. They're not exactly, but they don't have, we need the, each step to be kind of the same distance from each other. And they're just not. And so what we're going to do from here is we have to darken seven. Uh, well, we're probably going to then darken five. And it's just going to have a cascading effect. So I'm first going to come up here uh, with my with my uh, 4H and I think this step 8 can maybe be just a tiny bit deeper in terms of its value so I've got a 4H pencil that's the lightest pencil and I'm just gonna go over this a couple times and I just I just want to make sure that we can that it's a, a nice step from step 9 to step eight. Now I'm not darkening it much because I don't want to go, you know, it's, it's not too far off. I don't want to go too far too quickly. So again, um, using sort of a wrist swing at this point. If I had a piece of paper I could cover this area and place my hand on it and do a much more controlled finger swing or something. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and darken this just a little bit more. So again, that this and this is very clear that they are different values. And then it's a definitely a step darker. It's, you know, it, it's, it's not maybe, it's not kind of, is it? It's just got, it's got to be a very clear step darker than that step nine. And remember, this is a simplification of values. So I believe I mentioned that the most uh, people can pick up on about 18 steps of value. Uh, some can't see past 15, but a lot of people can see as many as, you know, 18. And then if you, you have artists that we train our eyes to see much, you know, to see values even better. And so, but most artists can't see beyond 24 steps of value in terms of being able to perceive a difference. Once you hit ste uh, 30 steps of value, uh, almost no one that, I've, that I know of, that I've known personally, can perceive that. People have to pull out like little light, re light meters to start to try to read the differences between um, the value steps at that point. But again, the, so this is what I'm going, where I'm going with this is that this is, again, as I said, a, a simplification of how many values there are in the world. If we have a, 10 steps of value, however, in a drawing or even in a painting, it will look like it has a full range. So if we can put 10 steps of value in a painting, it will appear that it has a full range of values which is good news for us. Now sometimes there are things that aren't quite this light and not quite this dark. And so there's going to be many times when you're drawing that there'll be half steps. Okay, and again, half steps would turn this into 20 value steps, right, if we had a half step between each. So again, sometimes we'll talk about a half step. Once you get to something like a quarter step or something like that, that is so soft and subtle. Uh, most people are not going to be able to perceive that. So, you know, again, this is a simplification of what we can see, and yet, if we can create drawings that have a range from this light all the way to this dark, and these steps in between, it will feel like it has depth and dimension. And if you know how to do it, do it really well, then there's, you'll have, maybe be able to make drawings or paintings that'll feel like you could, someone could step into and walk around 
There's that amazing. Okay, so I, that's all I'm going to do with this one. Now this one again, now I have a 4H, but I think I'm going to go to a 2H because we're down to step 7. And the step 7 is lighter than the step 8. And so I'm going to grab this step 2, and the, or step 2. I'm going to grab this 2H, and the reason we're going to use this is because, again, it's going to take much more time to build up the value than if I grabbed uh, an HB or something. Um, and plus this will also make it more smooth because there's still a bit of texture in here that's that's not uh, it's not what I want. Again, I may have mentioned that all artists are, you know, we like to control our values. We want to control our, uh, you know, drawings. We want to be able to, it's all about control, control, control. Um, <laughs> I joke in my classes that artists are control freaks. Uh, and in many ways we are. We want to be able to create an illusion that's very sophisticated so that we can create and draw people's eyes in the direction and have the eye move around the image the way we want them to go. There's a, there's a, there's a place to enter a painting, as people will say. There's a place to leave a painting. Uh, there's a, you know, a place to sit, or, sit and stay a while uh, before you then go on to the next, the next painting on the wall to look at that one. But there's definitely things that we want to be able to perceive and then we want others to perceive, and so we want to be able to control that stuff. And that's a good thing. We want that. It, it really it, it helps our drawing. It, it's a good thing. So um, I have a 2H that I was using that for. I'm going to bring my 4H back in here. Again, this will get a little deeper into the texture. I'll be able to control this. Because, again, I don't want this to go too dark. I need it to be not as dark as that, but darker than this. Um, and it may have to go this dark. I don't know. It may, may be that this will be as dark as this thing is going to have to go. Uh, but I won't know that until I have this number 7 at the value that I want. Now, there's a particular range for these values. However, it depends on what medium we're working in. At the very beginning, I had an oil painted grayscale and, and the and that grayscale it has a much wider range than even a charcoal grayscale and that charcoal grayscale has much a much wider range than a graphite grayscale but instead of trying to confuse you by saying well this actually isn't a step one it's actually step three and this is uh, you know all this sort of stuff we're just going to go ahead and still make a 10 step grayscale uh, and it's just going to have it's it's going to be a little bit, it's not going to go near as dark as some of the others, but we can certainly create a nice transition of, of 10 equal steps. And once I've created these, I can then use this with my graphite, you know, because again, I can say, hey, these are the limitations. It goes from here and goes that dark, and that's, that's the range, period, uh, between those, those values. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, there's, there's something really good about that because it will help you to understand what your medium can do and what it cannot. It, it'll help anchor you and go, okay, I can't, can't go any darker than that, you know. And uh, so grayscales are a good thing uh, in the particular medium you're working in because it gives you, it gives you the, the range of what uh, can be done in that medium. So again, we're just going to go ahead and continue to darken this. Again, I'm using this step four. And it's nice because I can get this to be, there's some patchiness, it's a little bit lighter here than some other places. So I can get that to start to darken slowly, which is again what I want. Um, I think that this needs to go a little darker still. And so I'm gonna grab a little bit, I'm gonna grab an HB pencil and we're going to go ahead and using this HB, now the HB is darker than the 2H, it's a pencil that's right in the middle. And again, I can use this to really much see how much more quickly it's getting a little darker. Um, and so I can use that as I'm drawing to 
to darken this a little more quickly. Now I, I still want to be, I'm still using a very gentle light touch because I don't want this to go, you know, just too dark too quickly. I don't want it to go, you know, kind of get out, up, out of my control. So, so again, I want to go ahead and come over here and I'm going to continue to darken this using a 2H because again I use the HB to darken a little bit but then you know now it's kind of close to where I want it and then I'm going to use this 2H to get it exactly where I want it okay and it's darker now but it still has to be you know darker by about the same amount that this is darker and it's not quite dark enough just yet so we want equal steps in, in terms of how you're stepping down to each value. It's kind of like stair steps. You don't want one stair step that's two inches down and the next stair step is six inches down and the next stair step is four and a half. That's just not what you want. That's a terrible type of... And so we're, we try... The other part of this is trying to keep the, the relationships, the changes, the steps. You know, this contrast should be the same as that contrast. And again, we're pretty close. Um, we're not exact just yet, but we're really close. We're in the ballpark now. We're, we're, we're within a half a step of value of where I need this to be in order for this to work. Okay, so we're going to continue just to, again, to darken this down just a bit. We're now about the same value as the step six, which isn't entirely surprising because I, I felt that was, well, I thought, you know, until I started darkening the seven, I didn't know, you know, whether it would have to darken the six too, but the seven is barely getting to the point where it needs to be in terms of how dark it is. And so that just means we better start at the top because we're going to try to go darker and darker and darker. Um, And again, as long as when we first started, we were we weren't way far off on this stuff. I mean, this step seven I've only darkened by maybe a half a step of value, uh, but maybe three quarters of a step more than what it was, and that's all it needed. Uh, you know, so that's the reason we we start off with what we call a staggered approach, where you put in this value, then that value, then this value, and then you try to put that one there and that one there. And it just helps you keep it within a range. You, you're always usually going to be off by a little bit. But the more you do it, the closer you'll be. So you might be like, ah, I'm only off by half a step of value. Even if you're off by a full step of value, again, that's unless it's you know, really, really off in terms of where this starts and where that starts. If this got too dark and if this was too light, and you know, there could be a way where this just would not, you, know, you wouldn't be able to pull it off without starting over again. But the, the whole reason we do what's called a staggered approach is so you're close enough that you have to modify it, like what I'm doing, but you're going to still be pretty close. So I think this step seven is about where we need it to be. Need to clean up that edge where this value meets that value. Like so. There's also a darkening right in this bottom corner of this step number eight. So, go ahead and take a little bit of that out. Now I've got some little, little the light dots there. I, I accidentally was pulled too much out. And there's still a little mark, that little dot there that I can get out. That's a little better. You can come over here to this corner. There we go. Okay. Okay, so anyways, these, you know, are, are really are, are not bad at all. They're doing they're they're doing good. Um, this one right here, maybe again, right in the middle. There's still it's a little bit light, like right through here. And so, if I have to, I just get a pencil and spend some time right in that little area where it's just a little bit light. A little bit lighter than it should be okay 
Um, but this is, you know, so this is going darker and then darker. And that's what I want for this, uh, for this grayscale. Now, 6 and 5 and all these others are now out of whack. But we've got the top part of this is starting to work the way we want it to. And so that's, that's good news. That's what we want it to be able to do is have, is have these, these values very clear. Oh, that's lighter and that's darker and that's darker still. And the steps are fairly even. I'm, I'm up here just trying to get, you know, again, where it's a little bit lighter through here, trying to make that more uniform. And I think it's, it's doing a much better job. So now for step six, um, I'm going to grab the HB uh, to start this off with. Let's go ahead and make sure that my, my edge right through here uh, is... What I'll start with is, is the edge, make the edge dark enough, and then we just bring that value down. So that right there is about what I want for that step six. We'll just bring this value down. Now by doing this, step five is going to start to, and again, it's going to be too light, so we're going to have to continue doing this with our other values. Again, I'm using a finger swing at this point. I really need much more control. I mean, I might jump in and do a, a wrist swing or an elbow swing if I needed to cover an entire area, but usually at this point we are actually trying to be much more controlled. We're going to be using that finger swing because it's, it's got, it has the most control. It's still not a tapered stroke or a feathered stroke, um, but it is, we, oh, that's a wrist stroke right there. Sometimes I'll do strokes and I won't even think about it because I'm just going, ah, I need to do this. And, and so I don't even think about it anymore, but I was thinking, no, oh, I'm doing a finger swing. And I looked down and I said, no, I'm not. I'm doing a wrist swing. Okay. Uh, my, my wrist is, is moving. And it's, a, it's actually rocking a bit, which is usually not a good idea. So I'm putting my hand underneath my wrist so, so now my wrist can, can move back and forth uh, in much more, with, with a lot more ease. Uh, and so, and it's also going to have less stress on my wrist as I do it this way, so that's good news as well. All right. So again, we're going to go ahead and keep darkening down on this uh, value for step six on the value scale. I'm still using an HB pencil. Now I'm back to the finger swing. Um, and again, I'll have, I have a little more control by doing this. And I can go ahead and I can also, again, start going different directions diagonally. Uh, to, you know, I was also going from transition from side to side to then going up and down. And then we can go from corner to corner. You go, and this is a diagonal that leans, you know, the top leans to the left. And I could do that. And I could do another one where the top leans to the right as I'm as I'm doing that and um, so I can continue to uh, darken this down and all this and that good stuff again we want to be able to now I think at this point we're in like half a step of value of where I want and using that a, that that HB also, you know, will start to show more of the texture of the paper. So now to kind of push it back down to where I want it to finally be at, I'm going to use this 4H because again the 4H pencil will will uh, it's a little easier to control very subtle changes of value with this. And so again, it's a really nice uh, pencil when I really want um, to control very soft transitions of value and you know I, I, I don't want big jumps I actually want to keep it you know within quarter steps and third steps and and you know stuff like that to try to get this to be as uniform as I can get it ok 
Okay. So, now that's looking better. Uh, it's still a little, a little lighter in the middle, so I'm going to go ahead and spend, I'm using a, a wrist swing on this, but I'm going to spend a minute or two keeping this, or, you know, darkening it gently as I work. So, again, that's about where I want that. Um, and so see how we really have to, you know, we, we really have to, it's really changing it up. All, all these, just these little changes, we now see that this, this step five is actually the same as the step seven um, because of all the changes that have been made. I'm going to go ahead and... This is, I should probably do this with a 2B. I think I had a, I had a 4B pencil. That's a bit much. And I thought at the time, but I was like, oh, I'm going to save time. I'm going to do it what I would normally do anyways. And I just put one stroke down. I said, nope, too dark. And so I got this 2B. I'll, be, uh, I'll use the 2B. Uh, and the 2B, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this step six. I'm going to darken along the edge for step five until it's the value that I want. right through there and such, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and bring that value down. Now, if I wasn't in this story, I'd actually turn this on the side so I could really play with that, with that edge. But we're gonna go ahead and, again, try to fill in the rest of this box, that same value. And this is probably gonna turn out to be about the same value as the step four. Um, okay, just by doing this, I'm almost at a step six. So this is darkened a little bit. You know, no, not quite. Actually, it needs to go darker still. So we're going to go ahead and keep working on this and I'm darkening this down. And because of the reflection coming off of this, I can't quite see that edge too well, but I think that that edge is a little rough on there, and I really wish that that edge was not quite so rough. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and try to clean this, this edge up a little bit. I'm going to use a sort of a mask as far as that goes. Uh, I'm going to use this, this little bit here, and I'm going to uh, go ahead and just blot this a little bit. And so that's taken, it was kind of above there a little too dark. And so I went ahead and took that out. And let's see, we're going to go ahead and again try to get this step five. Now this is almost going to be the, the value of a step five with charcoal, so that makes me a little nervous. Step five and charcoal, I mean, that's pretty close to what a step five should be. Uh, with graphite, that because I don't have as much range to the darks, we'll find out. We'll find out if I, if this started out a little bit too dark up there a little too quickly. But we'll find out in just a moment. So we'll keep darkening this step five. Uh, I'm still using the 2B pencil. Um, taking my eyes out of focus because you can see value better that way and this way you can see what's going on with the step five versus that step six um, I think if I use my H pencils I can get in there and take a little bit more of the texture out I think it'll darken this just a little bit more um, let's try with an HB for just a minute so let's get this HB pencil. Now this is harder than a 2B. The 2B is darker than an HB, and HB is the next step lighter than a 2B. And so I can use this, and because it's a slightly harder pencil, it'll get a little bit deeper into that texture. Um, again, I can't, sometimes it's the, the first time when, when, we're, when, we're, when you're drawing, 
I tell my students this all the time. The first three months of drawing is really a chore to be able to see the value. See what values and, and understand and identify what values we are looking at, what values we are dealing with. So I'm, you know, I, I, I tell and I encourage students to, to either buy or create a grayscale that they can use to start to identify the values that they are looking at when they are drawing objects. And no matter what the object is, it's always nice to have a grayscale with you so you can double check what the values are. And I do a lot of what's called plein air painting. That means you're painting outdoors. Uh, and when you're painting outdoors, you just have to know the values uh, or it's just not going to work. You don't have enough time to play with detail. So artists create great plein air paintings by uh, painting things with very definite, um, the definite value relationships. If those are right, you'll have a great painting. Uh, and if they're not, well, then you're, it's, it's much harder to have a great painting because it, painting and, and or drawing is all about the values. And so, um, so again, they have all kinds of little contraptions to check value, what are called color isolators and value isolators. And it's essentially just a gray card with a hole punched in it. So I know some people that have used like old, you know, uh, credit cards in, that they're no longer using or whatever and they'll paint the back with a neutral gray and then they punch a hole in it. You know, of course, scrape off the numbers and make sure that, you know, no, you know, take the strip off the back. And so that way you don't have any of your information getting out there that you don't want out there. But um, it's a really great way of having a, a value isolator and or color isolator because every color has a value. So you could use one of those. The other thing, the, the other thing you can do is you just take a, uh, a, you know, like a card, um, like a memo card or a flash card or something like that, where it's white and take, and take a hole puncher and punch a hole out of that or cut a hole with an X-Acto knife or do something where, but again, that's a, that's a really quick makeshift thing that you can use. And then you, you take the object the, with, the, uh, with the holes in it and you can, again, ch start checking values much more easily if you get lost. And uh, in the beginning, in the you know, first, first three to six months, and if you haven't done it, you could draw for ten, you know, 10 years and not be uh, well enough aware of the value relationship changes. So it's just it's a really great way. If you train yourself early, you don't have to worry about it. Um, I have people that I know that, again, have painted for a decade or more, and they just never have felt the need, and uh, the the things that they create suffer because of it. Um, so I mean, there's 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 real importance in value, and it goes beyond style. I mean, Matisse was using value, and Matisse, of course, was not painting realism, but his different shapes. And I'm talking about you know his later stuff that became, you know, very. Uh, two-dimensional, some people would even call it flat. Um, some people will call it poster space or, or flat space thinking uh, or collage space thinking. That's another way of talking about it. Um, but if you're doing a decent collage, you, st you have to be aware of the values. It's always about values. Whether you're dealing in abstraction, whether you're dealing in representational painting, whether you're dealing in non-objective painting, you know, no matter what the style is, impressionism or post-impressionism or classicism or, you know, uh, postmodernism or, you know, modernism or cubism or no matter what you're working at, it's all about what's the value. So this, uh, this exercise does have value uh, because it, it is just trying to teach you about how to use and identify, the, you know, the different values that you are looking at. Um, in the world around us. So, again, this has to go a little darker now. I'm using a 4B because this has, uh, it's just a substantial change that I'm making. Uh, I think that's uh, almost dark enough, so I'm going to hold off on using the 4B anymore. I'm going to jump up here and use an HB 
that's you know lighter than the than the 4B. 4B, 2B, and then HB. So this is two steps lighter. And what this will do is because it's a little lighter, I can use it to, you know, as I'm trying to just very gently push this a little darker and a little darker and a little darker. So it's much easier to control. I have more control with this. Now I need even a little more control. So I'm going to, uh, and I want to get rid of some more of the, the texture. And so I have a 2H pencil. Remember the 2H is the second lightest pencil. The 4H is the lightest. And this is the, and the reason I'm using this is because this will take out some of the texture. It'll turn those white little dots into gray little dots and it will look darker. It will also, it's easier to make it look more uniform. Um, again, if we have too much texture, we will destroy the illusion. And the illusion is, is that we're looking for is that if we do this right and we, 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 we set this away from us by about 15 feet and look at it, it starts to look like a gradation. Even though there is no gradation, these are just flat values, but from a distance, they start to look like there's a gradation. Um, you know, almost a, like a subtle gradation. Obviously, there is a gradation in terms of very definite steps, but when you look at this from a distance, it melts in and suddenly starts to look like perhaps it is just this 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 um, this value gradation, or what some people would call shading, going from dark to light, as opposed to chunks of value jumping from dark to light. So it's a really that's the illusion we're after. And if we have too much texture, it destroys that. If we if we don't have these edges touching correctly, or in other words, if they're not clean, if they're not crisp as, as crisp as we can get them, uh, then then that that's going to be um, that's going to be an issue. So, so now this I think is, is where we want it to be. And again, now this is what's going, what's going on is a little concerning because this is now almost as dark as the step two, which makes me wonder, am I going to, if I've run out of room, we'll find out in just a minute. But, and that just means that, and it's not a big deal. This happens, can happen to everybody, but we're going to see what we can do with that. So, and what I'll do usually for step one is I'll leave it a little on the lighter side and wait till I've darkened all these down before I start to really push that one. That one can probably go darker by maybe a half a step of value. Uh, but before I worry about that too much, we're going to go ahead and try to darken this step right here. And in fact, now this is a 4B pencil. I'm going to go ahead and go over both of these at the same time. Now remember graphite darkens on itself. So this was lighter, this was darker. And as I go over the both of them, this will darken and this will darken. And if I, if I don't darken this one, these will both still be, this will be darker, this will be lighter. Um, so I could certainly do that to see if I've got, you know, how much room Do I have to darken this out? Okay. All right. Well, we can go darker. So the three is now about as dark as the step four. And I'm using a 4B pencil. Now remember, when I'm using the 4B pencil and I want to darken it, to get it really dark, I have to layer it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do some, a little more layering. I'm going to take a 4H pencil and I'm going to go over this step three. With a 4H. And I'm going to go over the step two with a 4H. So I'm trying to make them both get darker as I go over them. I then am going to use a 2H pencil. And again, I'm going to go over the step three with a 2H pencil. And then I'm going to go over the step number two with a 2H pencil. OK. 
Okay. Because that way, again, I'm trying to keep them both going darker. Okay. And I can go ahead and see if I can do this at an angle to help that out. Maybe do a little bit of an angle on this. Sorry, to see if I can push this down just a little darker still. Okay. Once I've done that, now again, this and this seem to be the same. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use an HB. On the step three, I'm using a finger swing as I do this. And then I'm going to go down to step two and use the HB on that as well. And that's because I'm trying to get them to both go darker as I darken this up. Now, and this is starting to get darker than that just a bit. And so now we're going to use the 2B. And so I'm going to use this 2B pencil over the step 3. Like so. And again, this is getting darker. Now again, I can come over here and I can double check that that this is again darker along this edge which now it is okay and now I'm going to go ahead and darken a little bit more at step three which is I think doing a good job okay that's now darker uh, than the step four and if I needed to now again the step four has a couple patches there's a patch here and a patch here uh, that are a little bit just a little bit lighter and again I could go in with a 4H and very softly get those to darken up if the 4H is too light where it's not working I could grab a 2H I could grab an HB you know whichever but anyways I can get that to even out a little bit now for this step number two, because I think the three is about close enough, I'm going to go ahead and try to go darker still than this one. And I'm using a 4B again to, to darken this. All right. Now it's starting again. It's starting to get darker than the than the three. This number two, step number two. So I think I'm barely going to be able to do it, uh, which is great because again the the graphite has a little bit shallower range, uh, but it's still going to look like we've got a nice um, even step of the different values. Again, this I could go ahead and make sure that this line along there that border is as clean as I can make it as far as that goes again make sure this border is nice and clean um, there's a little bit of great you know a little bit of a gradation at the top now some of there's there's an illusion too so I got to be careful that I'm because here's what happens if, we, if you do this just right there will be a natural illusion that this is, is darker and this gets lighter but the thing is, that's it's, it's being pushed a little bit more because there is a slight, a slight gradation going on here. Uh, but anyways, I'm just saying that that will naturally happen. But some of that is because there is an actual gradation. I'm not going to take the extra. I could go over this for an extra hour with a 4H pencil and take out all of that. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to waste your guys' time. Uh, but that's how you do it. You just keep on working on it. So. At this last part, again, I, you try to keep a little bit in what's called reserve. So, for this last part, with this last value, I'm using just my 4B now. And I've got a little room to go just, just a bit darker before it starts to get... Because at a part where, if we're not careful, this will start going shinier. And it won't look darker, it'll actually start looking lighter. 
but there's just a little bit more uh, darkness that I can add to this and that will pretty much round this out to give me a full 10-step value scale uh, with, with, on, for this, again, for my value scale that I'm creating here. All right. Now, because of the way I've got the lights, again, graphite takes and can be hard to photograph. It can have a sheen to it. And there may not be a sheen that I'm looking at, but the camera might be picking it up. Uh, so some of this I'm going to have to, when I, you know, pull up the video, take a look at that. But the idea, and this is already starting to shine a little bit, so I got to be careful because again, if you're at the, if you're at the right angle, this is going to look lighter, and you have to avoid some of that with with graphite. You want to avoid some of that with graphite. Uh, this is a 2B. I'm going to see if I can, maybe knock some of the sheen off by using the, the 2B pencil a little bit. Um, still get in there and get some of those, those crevices out. Now again, if I know that this is not going to be lightened, I can use a little bit more pressure and darken this down. You don't want to pr you don't want to crank on it though, because again, if you do that, then it will go really shiny really fast, and you know it just won't look darker. It'll actually look lighter, and it'll be really hard to look at because it'll be just so shiny, no matter how you look at it. And so you don't want to you don't want that when you're when you're drawing. So again, you want to take it easy on that. So I'm still, I'm not going to try to get it any darker than that. If I did, it's just going to be self-defeating. Uh, and again, hopefully uh, from the camera angle, because I can't tell this until I actually, just because of the way uh, graphite is in terms of how how much sheen there is to it. Um, but this is, this has turned out really quite well. These are actually pretty close to being even steps. Now, not all the all not uh, all these are equal uh, equal meaning they're not all flat there's some that can have sort, sorts of little patches I'd have to get in here with a little eraser like this is a little dark here I just tap that a little bit fill this in where it's a little bit lighter tap this a little bit a little bit there fill this in where it's a little bit lighter to make it more uniform but it would take me about an hour to do that and I'm not going to make you sit here uh, and, and and watch me do this for another hour but that's the idea is that if, I, if this was like one I was going to keep and I was really wanting to make sure it was just as nice as I possibly could get it, uh, well, then I would go ahead and I'd take the extra time. And I would go ahead and cross hatch everything. In other words, go diagonal this way, diagonal this way, go this way, and then go top to bottom. Make sure every direction is covered so it's as uniform. Each bit was as uniform in its value as I could possibly stand to make it. Um, that's where the real... You know, that's, that's the real time burner. When I was in art college, they'd make us do like a 20-step value scale. And not only was it hours, I mean, it would take you days to do it because, you know, there was a cascading effect when you started darkening something over another. And it was almost like a dog chasing its own tail in some ways. Uh, and I know they were doing it just to really get us disciplined and really help us, and, and it was helpful. But it was also, you know, it, it haunted your nightmares. Uh, you'd be up all night. You know, you, you you know, with bloodshot eyes and all this stuff, you know, trying to get your project done for class, you know, and also you keep your scholarship and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it was, it's really good. It's really good for us. So, again, everyone should do a grayscale. We're pretty much finished uh, for this for now. Again, I could come over here and, again, there's parts that are a little bit too light or dark. That's too dark. Uh, that's a strange little darkness there. This has kind of blown out that edge. So again, I could take another hour just cleaning it up and make it really super clean. But since this isn't getting published in a book, I'm not going to care that it's, you know, or it's not my own that I'm going to put on the wall or it's not my own that I'm going to use as a, I'm not going to worry that much about it. But I'm just saying these take time. If you've never done a grayscale before, get ready to set, set aside at least two hours worth of time. Uh, we've been recording this for quite some, for quite a bit. Um, and so, and I've been talking, of course, as I'm working, which slows me down a little bit, but for me to even do a, a halfway decent scale, uh, value scale like this takes me about an hour and a half, sometimes an hour and 40 minutes. To push it to the next level, like what I was talking about, can take another two hours to get it to where it's really nice. And again, if I was going to clean these up, I, I would have normally just taped these off so I don't have to worry about it. 
and then peel it off at the end and you get this beautiful clean edges. But if I was going to do it all by hand, well then again, that could take another hour to two hours just to clean the edges all up the way I wanted them to. But anyways, try to, try to create a grayscale. And now again, we've got the grayscale going from 10 all the way down to 1. And we've got everything in between. So if I'm drawing something, I can start looking at this and go, where is it on this value scale? And I might go, oh, this one is a, a step 5. And this one is a step 6. And what is a step 5? Or what is a step 6? And I, ne I, I need to know that uh, if I'm going to be able to, again, start to play uh, with values. And so with this class, everything we're going to be doing is, is with values. So we're going to play the game. And so we need to know it. And this will help your drawing more than anything else um, with value. And I tell my students, if you're really serious about learning to draw, if you're really serious about learning to use value, do 10 of these in the next six months. Just value scales. It will level you up no matter where you're at. If you, if you, because again, you're stripping everything away and all you're dealing with is value and, and craftsmanship and making sure these values are as, you know, as uniform as possible. And the better you can do that, the better you can do the advanced stuff, you know, or, you know, what, the better you can do like photorealism or hyperrealism or even, even if you need, like, like a, need a nice beautiful tone in some sort of non-objective drawing, you need to be able to control value. You need to be able to control your, your graphite. And that's what this helps us to do. Okay, so go ahead and give this a shot. We went ahead, we laid this out with a, with a ruler. It's one and a half inches wide. It's 10 inches tall. Each of these is one inch high. You know, um, go ahead and, and um, make your own at home. Again, if you take the time, this will really revolutionize your drawing. It'll push you to the next level. You'll have much more control than you thought possible. The first time you do these, it, it, it can be a pretty tough experience because you're, you're dealing with, how do I get this smoother and how do I get that? Do not use your finger. Don't be using brushes uh, or something like that. Try to do it with just the pencil. Now, if it's really, really rough, you may have to, you know, create the new, do what we call the, the nuclear option, nuclear, <laughs> and I could get some tissue or a Q-tip or something. But understand, the moment that you do that, you're going to have to, first off, you're going to have to go back into it. So you might have to get really aggressive with it, erase it off, you know, patch it up and then go back in and meticulously with just the pencil, you can't just smear it and leave it. That always looks dirty. Never do that. It, it, it's terrible for graphite. If you're working with charcoal, it's no problem. Charcoal doesn't care. You could hit charcoal with a sander, go over it, throw some gesso on it, go over that, throw down some oil paint, go over that. It'll look great because charcoal doesn't care. Charcoal looks great no matter what surface you work on. You could work on brick and charcoal will look wonderful. Graphite is not that way. It's the high maintenance medium of the art world. And so you have to make sure your paper's all nice, that you have you know, a nice point on your pencil, you know, that you're not touching it with oily fingers and all that. You just have to make sure that you're really taking care of that drawing surface. But anyways, go ahead and do the uh, grayscale. I've really enjoyed our time together. Go ahead, get out there, get more creative. You guys take care now. Bye-bye.